My name is John Keane and I come from Sydney in uh, Aldalia in Australia. One of the surprising things for many readers of my life and death of democracy is that I show the evidence that democracy actually is born in the East. Even the word democracy is older than classical Greek. So one of the surprising or shocking things in my book for readers is that democracy has Eastern origins. It is not a product of the West. Uh, Western scholars who speak about Min Chu, they imagine that democracy, Min Chu, is liberal democracy. It's American style or British parliamentary style democracy, as if this is the measuring stick, this is the norm, this is the standard. In my writings, I say that this is an unfortunate habit. And so these are examples of the way that democracy uh, assumes many different forms, like many different flowers. There are forms of democracy in China with Chinese characteristics. So the point is that Western yardsticks, that Western standards for describing and judging what a democracy is need to be um, transformed. They need to be replaced with a, a more plural understanding of a democracy. Democracy is like a garden where there are many trees and different plants. That is the reality of democracy today. One of the grand ideas of the early 1990s put by Francis Fukuyama, the Japanese-American scholar. And his idea was that the West, with its liberal democracy, was now um, the winner. Liberal democracy, the triumph of liberal democracy. Well, there was a lot of controversy about this idea. Many people discussed it, many people complained against it as an American exaggeration. I think the mood, the atmosphere in the United States and uh, in the Atlantic region has changed. The end of history is a story that no longer seems true. It is a story that doesn't seem to be credible. Why? Because this liberal democracy in the United States, in Europe, is suffering hard times. Many things are not going well. Actually, they are going badly, much worse than most people expected. So Fukuyama's whole idea of the end of history has come to an end. So in a curious way, this is a moment in time when China has an opportunity to show that it is resilient, that it is committed to global institutions, to peace, to a kind of harmonious integration of peoples and institutions in the world. I am interested, of course, in the rise of China. The whole world is speaking about the rise of China, as I just said opportunity that China has in this 21st century situation is that China can be a force for non-violent uh, integration of peoples and states, the continuation of globalization, the preservation of multilateralism. This would be a very, very important contribution to the planet, and if China in particular could contribute to a speeding up of the greening of economies, of more environmentally sustainable policies, this would be also a very important contribution to a transformation that must happen, because currently the kinds of economic growth that we have destroying species, 
are increasing the temperature of the planet. This is not sustainable. So China has an opportunity to take the lead in this transformation.